Hi, it's Amy with Behind the Tweet. Today I wanted to address a question. How can a pathogen uh, impact or dysregulate human metabolism? It's a question I get often. There are a number of ways that pathogens can dysregulate human metabolic pathways, human metabolic signaling, human, meta human metabolism. But I wanna focus on one main mechanism today. And that mechanism is the fact hinges on the fact that many pathogens express proteins or metabolites that are able to directly interfere with human signaling pathways. Let me explain that in a little bit more detail. I'm still explaining it in a bit in simple terms, but hopefully you can follow me. So a signaling pathway in the body is often what leads, uh, what allows the body to keep, um, let's say, substances or different things within range. So I'm going to use the insulin and insulin signaling pathway as an example of this. Um, there are pathways in our body that help control the level of insulin in the body, trying to keep it within a certain range that uh, is usually good for how our body needs to function. Now, these signaling pathways in simple terms have checkpoints along them. And these checkpoints are often made up of what are called receptors. A receptor is a complex that sits on part of a signaling pathway, and it's a bit of a checkpoint. What happens is the pathway gets to a part where the receptor becomes involved, and at that point, a human protein or metabolite, and just to be clear, we have, as humans, proteins and metabolites circulating continually throughout our bodies. Our DNA, our genetic code, codes for these proteins and metabolites, and they help influence these signaling pathways. So what happens is you have a receptor on the signaling pathway, and then a human protein or metabolite will bind into that receptor. If that human protein or metabolite has a, a correct size and shape that fits into that receptor correctly, the receptor and the protein and metabolite will change shape in a way that signals the downstream part of the pathway to keep going. Now the next part of the path may we have another receptor, may have a second receptor. At that point, a different human protein or metabolite will bind into the receptor. If it's the correct size and shape and fits, the receptor and the complex and the, the protein, essentially protein receptor complex, will again change shape in a way that allows down signaling to continue until hopefully you have the correct outcome. You can think about that a little as doors getting into a house. Let's say your outcome was to get uh, into a house, similar to keeping uh, something in the body in range, um, a met metabolic signaling in range. Now imagine there was a pathway to get into the main room of the house that you wanted to get into. And there's a long hallway and there are doors, different doors along that pathway. So in order to get into the house, you first get to the first door. If you have a key that you know, has the size and shape of enough to get in the lock, goes into the lock, goes like this, you can get into that door. Now you're in the next part of the pathway, in the hallway pathway. There might be another door. Now if you have the correct lock or key that fits with a good enough size and shape into that lock, you can open the door and get to the next part of the pathway. That's somewhat analogous to how a signaling pathway in the human body works. Now, consider this. Many pathogens create proteins and metabolites that are very similar in size and shape to human proteins and metabolites. And that's because we actually share the same genetic code with the pathogens in our body. We all have evolved to have the same basic genetic code. So many of the proteins and metabolites that they express every day as part of their behavior in the body also circulate throughout our tissue and blood. Now, in fact, many people might argue, um, or you could argue that there are probably more, um, at least microbial and viral proteins and metabolites in the body because there are simply so many of these organisms now understood to persist in us humans. So think about this. If a pathogen expresses or creates a protein that is similar enough in size and shape to a human protein, it can begin to impact a human signaling pathway. And that, that redundancy, that overlap in size and shape between pathogen proteins and human proteins is often referred to as molecular mimicry mimicry in size and shape. Now, think about that. If a pathogen expresses a protein that's similar enough in size and shape to a human protein, and we were looking back at the insulin pathway, this would be a human receptor on a human signaling pathway. And a pathogen protein might come in and bind it. Now, it might not be the perfect size and shape, but it fits well enough into the receptor 
that it does change the shape a bit, except that since it's not the correct human peptide, the signal that gets sent down to the next part of the pathway is dysregulated or skewed. So you actually end up having an incorrect or altered part of that pathway sent down. Now, if there's another receptor, you might have another pathogen protein bind in instead of a human protein. The same thing would happen. The receptor and that protein might change in a way that does not convey the correct signal to the end of the pathway. And where you're going to end up at the end of the day is signaling and metabolic problems because the pathway is not functioning correctly. So that would be equivalent, if you think about the house and door analogy, that would be equivalent to a pathogen or a robber in a way, like a burglar trying to get into the same house as you. And that burglar doesn't have your exact keys, but it has keys that are similar enough in size and shape to get into those doors and open them just enough to get through. Could still get into the house, unfortunately. Now, to give you more specific examples of this, there was a recent study done at Harvard that's a, that's a fantastic example of this happening. In fact, they actually call it a paradigm shift. The, 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 uh, the uh, name of the paper is viral insulin-like peptides activate human insulin in IGF receptor signaling, a paradigm shift. Now, there are many examples of this, but this is a really good one. And that's why I think paradigm shift is, is fair enough when they're talking about it. What they found is that a family of viruses that are common in the human body in our microbiome populations, often found in stool samples, which means they likely persist in the gut, create proteins, a class or a whole range of proteins that they call VILPs or V-I-L-P-S that are very similar in size and shape to many human proteins, including several proteins that activate or, or, or help signal well with the insulin pathway. That's why I used that as an example before. And so they actually showed that what I was talking about before in my example can happen in real experiments in real life. In this case, they took mice and they found that the uh, murine or mouse insulin receptor, when mice um, had a lot of this viral peptide in their systems, the viral peptide would bind into the mouse insulin receptor, definitely uh, kind of mess up its signaling to the point where the mice in the study who had this viral protein in their systems to a high enough level so that it was dysregulating the receptor ended up developing impaired glucose tolerance, problems with glucose uptake, and to be honest, signs and symptoms of diabetes. So a very potent way to cause a metabolic problem, these viral insulin-like uh, peptides. And what I really like about this study is that the researchers comment, they say, furthermore, since only 2% of viruses, and they're talking about in the human body, had been sequenced, this study raises the potential for discovery of other viral hormones, which are a form of protein, which along with known virally encoded growth factors may modify human health and disease. They're totally right there. As I've stressed in many of these videos, or in some of my videos, we have not yet characterize most of the viruses and even many of the microbes and fungi that persist in the human body. So these trends, the ability of pathogens to create proteins and metabolites that disrupt our metabolic pathways, they may be happening at a much larger level in the human body that we're not able to totally effectively document because we haven't even figured out yet what the pathogens are or the viruses are. And so we don't even know what proteins and metabolites are proteins, if it's a virus, are, they are expressing. That's a major point. And I've been using the insulin receptor as a pathway here, but viruses or bacteria that express proteins and metabolites that are pathogens can disrupt almost any kind of pathway in the human body in this same general sense. And I want to end with another study, which was done by a team in China that had a, found a similar outcome in their study, except that they found that a bacterial protein created by the bacterial pathogen Staph aureus or Staphylococcus aureus was able, again in mice, bound not the receptor, interestingly this time, but seemed to have a size and shape that was able to bind insulin itself in these mice, preventing the insulin, which is a signaling molecule itself, from even being able to target the receptor that it needed to signal it to at all, essentially preventing the correct peptide um, insulin, in this case, from binding into the receptor that it would need to have the pathway move forward. So that was a bit of a different mechanism. And actually, the size and shape of these uh, bacterial, this bacterial protein and insulin were close enough to bind in a way that just prevented their receptor from being able to be activated. Similar downstream result, though. The whole signaling of the downstream pathway changed, just like it did with the viral proteins. And the mice in the study, again, began, again, I'll just pretty much quote it here, uh, restored, oh, no, no, no. They uh, inhibited the downstream signaling, 
caused the mice in the study to develop impaired glucose tolerance and, and signs and symptoms of diabetes again. So what was interesting too is this team in China developed an antibody that prevented uh, the staph protein from binding insulin. So it kept them apart. And in those mice, it seems like insulin was correctly able to bind its receptor in the mice and continue the process of the correct signaling pathway. So the mice that had this antibody that blocked that bacterial uh, human interaction, they actually began to restore their glucose signaling um, and they got to a place where they no longer seemed to have diabetes. So that's, that's how different, um, different the metabolism, especially uh, related to insulin, was in these mice who did or did not have this one uh, bacterial protein interfering with a signaling pathway. So that's it for today. Keep in mind that if we only studied these signaling pathways without taking into consideration the fact that pathogens and their proteins and metabolites can impact these pathways, we would be missing a large part of the picture. So if we only studied the insulin pathway and we saw that it was dysregulated, but we didn't factor pathogens and their proteins and metabolites into our understanding of what could be going wrong, we would, we would note that dysregulated pathway, but we would try to create a lot of drugs to try to fix, fix it, figure out what's going on, modulate it, without necessarily realizing the upstream factor that was causing the most problems. And if that was the case, what might be the most effective way to restore the signaling and the balance in the patient would be to target the pathogen. So always keep in mind that when we're looking at metabolic dysfunction or immune dysfunction in a, a human or an animal, we need to consider the microbiome, the virome, the pathobionts or pathogens that persist in these communities, the proteins and metabolites they express, and the ability of these proteins and metabolites to interfere with our human signaling networks. That's it for today. Take care.